Hi, my name is Rick Wessel. I'm the Associate Dean for Academic and Student Affairs here at Samueli Engineering at UCLA. And wow, it's, it's really great to get to talk to you, the leaders of the student orgs here at Samueli Engineering. I, we really appreciate everything that you do. I prepared a little presentation. Let me um, get those slides up here. So I'm gonna um, share my screen. Um, let's see. And fire up a presentation here. Uh, there we go. All right. So this is my presentation at the Engineering Leadership Workshop. Oh, what is that? 2022. Oh. There we go. There, my presentation at the 2022 Engineering Leadership Workshop. And what is this presentation all about? Um, well, uh, I want to talk about the role that student organizations have in Samuel L. Engineering. It's an important one. I want to give you a few tips about leadership for long-term success. And I want to talk about ways that we work together, the, the student organizations and the School of Engineering, how we work together. Or another way to think about it is how you, the leaders of those student organizations, work with me and with Wes Vihara and other uh, associate deans and leaders in Samuel Engineering to get things done together. Um, and then uh, I also just wanna briefly touch on some focus areas for the coming year. So let's get started with this presentation. Um, so what you guys already know what you do, but just kind of to, to lay it out there. Um, wow, we think that the student arts are critical to the success of Samuel Engineering. Um, it's just an important part of being an engineering student at UCLA to participate in the orgs, um, to help be a part of the organizations and to benefit from the services the orgs provide. So um, I, to me, I think that the student organizations build a cohesive community of, of engineering students and that community spans across class years and that's really valuable. It's a way for our community of engineering students to sort of bring the freshmen in to the School of Engineering's community and then it allows a student to grow in leadership and in responsibility as they move um, through the years as a student. And, and when they finally graduate, they might be an officer or a president of one of the orgs. Um, and that process of growing in, as a, as a student grows in the org, it's just such an opportunity for learning. Um, and I think that really your experience as a student in Samuel A. Engineering is a little incomplete if you're not joining an org and, and learning how to lead and, and solve problems in sort of a practical way through being in an org. Um, and not only that, there are some ways that uh, the org serve the school and the community directly. I mean, we really rely on the orgs to help us um, uh, introduce students to the campus, um, and also, you know, orgs are reaching out in a variety of ways to high schools and to the greater LA community and even to the world and solving important problems. So we just really appreciate everything that you do. And the bottom line here is that you're critical to the Samueli community. Um, so because I know that you're critical to our community, I want you to feel comfortable knowing that I really do want to help you succeed and that if you see a, an issue that's preventing your organization from succeeding, I want you to you know, let Wes Uihara and, and me know about it so that we can work on those problems. Okay, so let me just mention a few things that I think are important for um, continuing uh, the success of the student orgs that we've had. Um, and I wanna talk about this because you know, your successful um, activities are such an asset to the School of Engineering. Okay, so um, I, I think about these along the lines of leadership for long-term success. There's actually a really interesting article in the LA Times, New York Times over the weekend called Long-Termism. And it's a way of thinking about, you know, moral behavior in the sense that we're not just doing things for our own generation, but for the future of humanity. So I want you to think about your student or like that as well. Um, you're leading your student organization, not just for this year, but kind of for forever. Um, and it, one of the key things you wanna think about is this concept of institutional memory. Um, it's really important that 
when you leave your position of leadership at the end of the school year, people will still be able to remember how to do things as well as you did them this year, next year. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's, a really disappointing failure when somebody has an org that's very strong one year, but then next year there's nobody left who remembers what to do. And the org drops down like 10 rungs on the success ladder and suddenly nobody can do anything. And it takes years for an org to build back from that kind of a, a failure to pass on institutional memory. So I just wanna kind of put that in your head that job one, um, of you as a leader for your org is to make sure that you've got a way to maintain and pass on the institutional memory of how your org does what it does because your leadership changes every year. The membership is changing. Like in four years, you'll have an entirely new membership. Not None of the same people are there. There's got to be, you've got to pay real attention to passing that knowledge on. Um, and an important part of that is succession planning. Who are you going to pass the baton on to um, next year, you need to be thinking about that now because you want to be training those officers to step into your role um, to be ready to do that. Not that they get elected, but they have no idea what to do, but you've actually been grooming um, your pool of leaders so that whichever one of them gets elected, they all know what's going on um, and they're ready to take over and the org is ready to continue to succeed. Um, so if you've got institutional memory and succession planning down, then the third thing to think about is, okay, is there a way that I can not only just continue the org at its current amazing level of success, but make it even better? And there's this idea of continuous improvement um, where you're looking for ways, you know, kind of open to the idea that some things about your org may not be perfect and could be improved. And you can hear that feedback um, so that you can achieve even greater success um, next year, you know, even after you're gone, you know, that's uh, really great leadership when you set, when you make the org a little bit better and you pass all of that information and in that I, that framework of continuous improvement on to next year's leadership. Okay, so that's leadership for long-term success. Let me go back and talk about just um, practically um, things that um, you as student org leaders and I, as an associate dean for academic and student affairs, that we both want to happen um, and that we want to work together on. So the number one thing is we want to keep the students safe. Okay, I really, um, that's just something we really want to make sure happens. It, it's devastating on a personal level um, if something, if somebody gets hurt um, badly while they're doing something for a student org not only is it just bad, but it's it's also bad for the org. You know, things are going to, it really causes problems on many levels. Um, and, and safety is something that we can, we can take care of. We can do the things that we need to do to keep our people safe. Um, and so there's training at the beginning. Um, and then there's just sort of paying attention to things throughout the year. Um, so and really, this is important for all orgs, but especially orgs that are you know, in the shops, working on projects, it's just critical. So um, I want to support you in any way I can. Um, uh, Wes has done a, a really incredible job trying to set up the right trainings. And we want to involve, it's really important, you can help us do this. We want to involve your faculty advisors more in that process, get their wisdom and knowledge, help make sure that we've got the right um, safety training in place and that we're enforcing it appropriately to keep everybody safe. All right. Um, another thing that that you you know that you need space to operate in, and we are working on that. And and it, we made some moves at the end of last year to reallocate space to better accommodate the needs of the student orgs. And now, um, I think the challenge right now, um, and in August and September, is going to be making sure that the transitions that we decided on in the spring actually get done. Um, so Wes is going to be working with our new associate dean, Greg Potty, the, the new associate dean for um, research and re physical resources, um, to make sure that those moves get completed. Um, and uh, another thing that we need to work together on are financial transactions. In other words, how do you purchase the things that you need? Um, 
most of you will work with your departmental um, financial manager um, to, to make your purchases. Um, I want to encourage you, actually, when you take in your donations, to take them into a UCLA account um, and then work with your departmental um, financial person to make your purchases through that account. I know it could seem easier to just have people give you money that goes into a checking account and just write those checks, but there are just a lot of protections for you and for your org by working through the UCLA organization, um, even if it is a little bit more bureaucratic. And so we would like to work with you to help keep the bureaucracy manageable, but encourage you to do it that way. Um, so uh, I think that we both agree that we would like to help our students find jobs. Um, and you guys do that through a lot of student organized career fairs. And I think that's fantastic. And we want to grow that. But I also want to um, ask you to coordinate your career fair and, and activities related to helping students find jobs with Will Herrera, who is our um, the director of our undergraduate research and internship programs, um, because he is his job is to help our students find jobs and he would like to support your work and also kind of coordinate it a little bit to make sure that we don't hold two competing career fairs on the same night, for example. So um, having your industrial liaisons or your people who are running career fairs um, be in contact with Will Herrera, that's something I would really like to see happen so that we can support each other in our mission to get as many of our students um, good jobs or choices between good jobs before they graduate. Um, and a great source of funding for most student orgs um, is donations from corporations. And that's another area where we wanna help you. Um, and we also wanna coordinate with you. So we have an external affairs department, which um, manages the job of bringing in more donations and what they call stewardship of donors, which is making sure that the people who gave the money are happy with how they're treated and how the money is spent. Um, and so external affairs would like to work with you um, to help you succeed in raising that money and also to help coordinate those activities, again, so that we are helping each other and not stepping on each other's toes. So um, there's another area that we both, I think, wanna work on, and that is helping all students feel included. Um, and, and that includes helping all students feel included in the student organizations. Um, so that's an area where our new, or not so new, Dean for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, uh, Veronica Santos, and I would like to work with the student orgs to make sure that um, our student orgs are as inclusive as possible and that we're creating a climate that um, is helping all students in the school you know, participate fully in our student organizations. So um, Dean Santos will be speaking more about that. Um, and I you know, hope that that's, that's an area that we can talk about more as the year goes by. Um, and then uh, I love your help um, during UCLA Discover, helping admitted students discover UCLA. This is actually really um, critical assistance that you give to the School of Engineering, letting the, the incoming students know how exciting all the student organizations are. And, I, I think that the thriving student organizations is one of the key reasons that UCLA is one of the best places to be an undergraduate student in engineering. Um, and I also think uh, your participation in Discover helps the orgs to um, reach out early to incoming freshmen, to help the freshmen know and transfer students know about your orgs and find out about those opportunities. All right, so, and then finally, um, I, I really hope that you will share all of your good news. We have an assistant dean for communications, um, Christine Lee, um, and Matthew Chin in her organization, you know, helps to get news out to the world about what's going on in Samuel Lee Engineering. And some of, you know, some of the best news that we have is about things that the student orgs have done. You know, if you have just launched a rocket to a new record-breaking altitude, we want to know and we want to tell the world. If you built the best concrete canoe ever, um, if you have a solar car that is setting a new record in efficiency or speed, or you are going to so many high schools and doing so much good work, whatever it is, 
we want to tell those stories and we want your um, communications officer or your or, or you to be in touch with Christine Lee, letting her know your news so that we can share it with, with the whole, with, with the UCLA community and with the world. Um, so just briefly, I want to talk about some things that are our focus for the coming year. Um, Dean Murthy retired and, um, or didn't retire, she moved on. She's now president of Oregon State University. Um, and we have Bruce Dunn, our previous associate dean for physical resources um, and research is now the interim dean of the school. And then in this coming year, we're gonna select the new dean of engineering and, and the student. we want the students to participate in that selection process. So look out for news about that. Um, and then um, we also uh, want your help with equity, diversity, and inclusion. I talked about that earlier, including um, the entire population of undergraduate students in your organization and making everybody feel welcome uh, and, and feel like they have a place in your organization and can contribute. I think that's really an important focus for the coming year. Um, and then, uh, wow, we have those space allocations that we made in the spring and we are trying to get those moves done. Um, so if you're one of the orgs that's moving around a little bit, there's gonna be that time when we reach out for your help and we're really looking for your assistance to help those moves happen as smoothly as possible. Um, and um, also we have this, um, we're in this world where uh, COVID has happened um, and uh, it's still around, um, but we're trying to get back to some court sort of normal. Um, and then we're finding out that some things still are good to be done virtually. But on the other hand, we all know it's really important to meet in person. I think it's just an ongoing discussion for this year for us to figure out, um, you know, what is, what should we be doing? What things should definitely be in person? What things should, are better done by Zoom? Um, the ELW, a lot of this is done by Zoom just because it works out. We can get this important news out to you in August and have these, start having these conversations. Uh, on the other hand, Engineering Welcome Day, it's got to be in person. And we're so excited about that. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to all working on all of these things with you guys. Um, and I want you to know that personally, I think the student organizations are incredibly important. You guys do wonderful things. And together, let's engineer change. All right, so I'm looking forward to working with you. And now, I, um, if we are here for the live version, let's take your questions. Thank you.